Welcome to What Remains of Edith Finch. This is an adventure game where you explore the remnants of the Finch household. I've seen some reviews for this game, and it's apparently extremely, extremely good. That's all I know. So I'm going into this without having really seen it played at all. I think I saw 30 seconds of a trailer, and that's about it. So I'm super excited. Um, when you first start the game, it basically starts a new game just by starting the game. So I've got to start a new game here. And that will reset it. From the screenshots I've seen, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, I think we're on a boat. I think we're on a boat. Yes, we're definitely on a boat. I think we're on a boat to the Finch family household. Um, so something cool I noticed in the menu is that you actually see the family tree in the menu. So this seems to be us, Edith, or Edith Finch, born in 1999. Um, I noticed the newest date I could find in here is 2016, so I'm assuming this is at pretty much in the present day, probably 2017, which means that I'm, I guess, probably about 18 years old, Edith Finch. And based on this, it looks like we're the only one left alive. I think our entire family has passed away. Everybody, other than us, has a date of death, the newest one being Dawn and 2016. So yeah, I guess that's why the game is called What Remains of Edith Finch. As far as living relatives, not that much remains. I love the music in the menu. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning, with the house. Oh. I wonder if the whole story is told through, well stories on the boat ride to somewhere. Whoa. Shift apparently zooms in. It's expecting it to sprint. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. This game is gorgeous. It's so good looking. Oh, there's even a full body. I, I feel so rare. Normally you look down and you just see nothing. Looks like I've got a necklace on. What is that? It looks like a ring or something. Although it's a little bit misshapen. And it looks like there's some feathers attached to it. Orcas Island Gazette. Is that the island the family's house is on? Orcas Island? Also, what in the heck am I looking at? I'm sorry, is that the house? Because that looks like something out of a fairy tale. That does not look safe. It's like a miniature version of the house. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I'm guessing the Finch family is a bit eccentric. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. Brother Lewis's funeral. 
2010. So Edith was 8 at the time. Wait, no, not 8, 11. Yes, both of their brothers died, Lewis and Milton. I noticed down here, too, Sam, Calvin, Barbara, and Molly. All of these, well, not all of them, Sam seemed to live 6, 7, 8, well, lived till they were 33, which isn't very old at all. But Calvin, Barbara, and Molly especially lived very short lives. 50 to 61, so they lived to be 11 years old. Barbara lived to be 16 years old. Molly lived to be 10. And they didn't all die on the same year either, so it's not like it was one particular accident. Video surveillance. That water looks nice. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. <laughs> Hmm. Fork in the road. Uh. Let's go down. Missing. Milton Finch missing? So is that what happened? Milton went missing and then was presumed or found dead? Hmm. I just love the ambience here. The wind and that frog and the sound of the water. I feel like I could find the frog if I looked for it. Where's the frog? This is really gorgeous. I wish I had a flashlight. Another missing poster. It's a bunch of them. Oh, wow. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. There's a deer up there on the path. Oh, I wonder if I can get closer to it. Woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something but never do. Doesn't seem to notice me. I love the, the text of the voiceover being actually in-world. It's a really nice little touch. The 
house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. That's absurd. <laughs> what kind of a house is that? It really does feel like a fairy tale. leads up here. I want to go see how close I can get to that deer. Goodbye. So I guess either pathway leads to the house. I just realized... There's no way to drive to the house, is there? At least not right up to the house. Neither of these pathways are at all big enough for a car. I wonder what this truck was used for. Probably nothing. <laughs> what is that? It's a huge dragon I head. I asked Edie once about the dragon in the pond. She said it had killed her husband. I was six. It seemed like an odd joke to me even then. Crushed beer cans. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Me too. I'm just worried about the structural soundness of it, especially when you get up there. Oh, look at the detail of the, the ivy waving in the wind. All the vegetation looks so alive. It really makes a difference when vegetation moves and isn't just static. Still can't get over the fact that I can actually see my legs. I love that. Oh, wind chime. through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. <laughs> I bet. I didn't know I was actually going to be able to go into there. Can I leave? Nope. I'm trapped in the house now. The power had been turned off the night we left. Oh, this is so beautiful. Look at the dust motes in the air flitting through the shafts of sun. Sun, light, that is. This environment is so detailed. Are those packing? Oh yeah, those are packing peanuts.
typical garage stuff. Ooh. That's gorgeous. Someone's working on a really intricate design for some piece of wood and metalwork. Yeah, given the look of the house, I'm guessing they were a family of tinkerers and, you know, uh, DIY kind of people. For the first time in years... I felt like I was home. Welcome home. God, this environment is gorgeous. What a strange, eccentric house. So January 2010. That's when Lewis died. And the last time Edith had gone back here. Uh, Edith said they turned the power off as they left, right? Don, Lewis, Milton, Edith, e Edie. Who's Edie? Oh, there they are. 1917 to 2010. 2010, they lived the same year as Lewis. So that's their grandmother, right? I think if I'm reading this correct, I think Gus and Dawn are the parents of Edith, Milton, and Lewis, right? And Edie and Odin are the parents of all these people. If I'm understanding this right, I might not be. To be honest, I don't really know how to read family trees. If there's some, like, special way to read them. Yeah, this environment is so detailed. But instead of a family, they were just memories of one. They put so much work into this environment. Oh my god. It looks so lived in. Holiday feast, witch's kitchen, a viking's belly, nordic cookbook, flour, salt, water, yeast, northwest chief, chef, rather. Tons of cookbooks. Yeah, viking's belly, nordic cookbooks. I'm guessing they have uh, nordic roots, right? Just based on some of these names, like... Sven, Ingborg, Odin. Loving memory of Lewis Finch. Beloved brother to Edith, son of Dawn, a great grandson to Edie. Ah, first look at some of the other parts of the family. Oh, the the text is actually telling us the people's names. Yep, so that's Dawn. There's me. Old Granny Edie. There's Lewis, who's the one that died in 2010. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. <laughs> Imperial Palace, Orcas Island. Orcas Island, Washington. Oh yeah, there's Washington plates on that truck out there too. So, we're in Washington. Fanny Farmer, Junior Cookbook, Cos Cosmic Cuisine, Pleasures of Japanese Cooking. There's a lot of cookbooks, my god. Stacks and stacks, and these are probably more cookbooks, huh? They are. Oh, 
Oh, old family recipes. Clip there to the top. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. There's a cat! I mean, I guess it's not here anymore, of course. That would explain why there's a... Doggy door? Can you call a cat door a doggy door? Are they interchangeable? Apples, apple pie... So if the power's turned off, then I'm never going to be able to turn on the lights, huh? Oh, this is... a stove for heating, I think? And I guess you could probably use it... Yeah, you could use it for cooking, too, if you want. It's got the places for pots and pans. Obviously, they didn't use it for that, though, because it's got books on it. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Christ. Is that a repeated picture? That's weird. That's very odd. Yeah, it looks like ED needed an oxygen tank to help them breathe. So this would be from 2010, which is close to the time that Edie died. I see a flashlight. Oh, I can't grab it. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. I wonder if that's why we ended up leaving finally. Just couldn't get enough support in such a weird and out-of-the-way place like this. Oh, what a view. Can I go out there? It's such a weird mixture of, like, quaint and old, but also new technology. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house, after it sank. <laughs> it sank? Oh my god, the letters went up the chimney. That was cool. But yeah, stuff that looks really old and quaint and weird, and then just, like, an HD TV. And like, an iPod speaker docking station kind of thing. I could... that's eh, probably a doggy bed. It seems a little bit too big to be a cat bed. Maybe there was a dog and a cat. Someone like knitting. Wow, look at this table. Huge slab of an old tree. Are they all cookbooks? Scene critically. Metamorphosis. Gravity's rainbow. Okay, they're not all cookbooks.
Ooh. Insect collection. Scorpions and centipedes and millipedes and butterflies. That's the third time I've seen that photo. Someone was obsessed with that photo. Someone fought in the war? <laughs> Little finches. One of them fell off. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. So I guess Milton was never actually found then. Let's see, what does that say? If you have information about Milton, call the Orcas Island Police. Went missing October 23rd, 2003? Is that what it says? That matches the year. Date of birth. Last, last seen on this island. Uh, nothing else, it seems. Useful. So I'm guessing the front door wouldn't have opened since I went in through the doggy door. And I can't seem to get out, so I guess that means the key was not for the front door. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Oh, look at all those old letters. Oh. Look at that. This thing is... We, we saw one of another one of these in the garage. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Huh. So what is this thing exactly? Partially it's just a thing to look through, but also it seems like it just entirely blocks off the room. I mean, look, what, they completely sealed this place in. They put that like seal and foam all around the door. Why? Trying to preserve the library somehow? Odd. I think we go upstairs now. Although, I didn't try this, did I? Now let's look here. Great-Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. So Sven built the house. Over here. Wait, Barbara Finch, were they like involved in movies, it looks like? This is my friend Bigfoot. Definitely it looks like Hollywood production. By the way, the reason that probably uh, looked kind of weird when I was spinning this thing all haphazardly, um, you don't just press the thing and then it like uses it. You actually have to like move the mouse in my case, since I'm using mouse and keyboard, you have to move it to do the thing. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Hmm. Uh, 
Upstairs it is then. After Melton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. My god. Sounds like things got really bad. Why would you seal up all the bedrooms? What? Whoa. What is this? I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. This is gorgeous. I love the look of this room. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Oh, so the key might be for that. 20,000 leagues under the sea. I'm not going to look at it just yet. The finches. I guess that's their house underwater. Would that be the first house that sunk, maybe? That is such a cool room. Molly. Look at that door. They're such an eccentric, creative family. So did Dawn seal all the rooms just because all the kids were uh, had left or were dead? Like, didn't want to... Like, wanted to preserve their memories, maybe? Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Look at all these photos. Oh, I see a cat. There's a cat. And there's a dog. Oh. It's a corgi, I think. Someone painting. I think they might be pregnant. Or it could just be like the pose or something, I'm not sure. My friend, Bigfoot, Robert Finch. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Yeah, they're definitely a movie star. just power cord what is that I wonder if that leads up to the weird houses like the weird parts of the house also there is an empty little spot behind there hmm I'm suspicious I smell secrets yeah there's no power so doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, Barbara's room. Barbara was a child star for two years. Until America grew out of it. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Hmm. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. How do you unlock it, though?
Did I go this way? I don't think I did. No, definitely not. Calvin. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. That's odd. So they just like left the room? Like they left Calvin's room just kind of their half just preserved? Gregory. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Mount Rainier. That floor looks very, very, very shaggy. It looks like it would just, like, absorb you into it. Oh, finches. Sven and Edie. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was ten and she was painting my portrait. Okay, I think it's time to go here. This key must be for this book then. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. <laughs> now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Little secret. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Yeah, a little secret room. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. Oh, you can see that I'm crawling on my knees. Oh, that's so cool. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. Molly's room. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. Well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Yeah, so, so far, this game is absolutely gorgeous and fascinating, and I can't wait to play more. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to look at Molly's room.